Good morning, everyone. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. We'll stand before the Lord now, calling to mind our sins and asking for his pardon and peace. <clears throat> Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy in us forgive us our sin and bring us to everlasting life Amen. let us pray <clears throat> keep your family safe O Lord with unfailing care that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace they may be defended always by your protection through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God called to Adam and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten then from the tree of which I have forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree. And so I ate it. The Lord then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, The serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head, while you strike at his heel. To the woman he said, I will intensify the pangs of childbearing, in pain shall you bring forth children, yet your urge shall be for your husband, and he shall be your master. To the man he said, because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat, cursed be the ground because of you. In toil shall you eat and shield all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to you as you eat of the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face shall you get bread to eat until you return to the ground from which you were taken. For you are dirt and to dirt you shall return. The man called his wife Eve because she came, became the mother of all the living. For the man and his wife, the Lord made leather garments for which he clothed them. Then the Lord God said, See, the man became like one of us, knowing what is good and what is evil. Therefore, he must not be allowed to put out his hand to take fruit from the tree of life also, and thus eat of it and live forever. The Lord God therefore banished him from 
from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he had been taken. When he expelled the man, he settled him east of the Garden of Eden, and he stationed the cherubim and the fiery revolving sword to guard the way to the tree of life. The word of the Lord. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Before the mountains were begun, and the earth and the world were brought forth from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as the watch of the night. In every age, O Lord, you have given our refuge. You make an end of them in their sleep. The next morning they are like the changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew, but by evening wilts and fades. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge.
The reading today is another one of the two times that Jesus multiplies bread, bread for the journey. He wants these people taken care of, and he is certainly going to attend to their need in this particular moment. But as our gospel uh, acclamation says, we don't live on bread alone, that physical bread. We live on the word of God, and then the bread of life. Now the first reading tonight, uh, today, this morning is the, um, is now where it is the fall, the, and then right in the midst of the fall is the, what we call the Proto-Evangelium, the Proto-Evangelium, the, the beginning of the Gospel, where, yes, we're in a pickle, yes, Adam and Eve have sinned, yes, um, <clears throat> we have a problem, but right in the middle, we hear this actual blessing upon Adam and Eve the, of, of the future salvation where he says to them um, you will, um, I will put enmity between you and the woman between your offspring and hers he will strike your head while you strike at his, he at, at his heel this is a very small little verse, but so much has been written in theology, uh, I guess philosophy too, but theology for, for, for centuries and centuries. It is the untying of the knot, and God must untie it. We couldn't even begin the process. So with God's grace, there will be this battle between the woman, and who is that woman? For us, it's Our Lady. This woman is going to come, and she will begin the untying this great knot that has overcome all of us, this knot of sin and this knot of death. And it's beautiful that there has, of late, you know, Pope Francis has brought it back into the church or popularized it a little bit more in the church, Our Lady, the Untire of Knots. It's a beautiful devotion if you can uh, look into it. So we hear this, this um, passage that God is not going to leave us alone. And the first question addressed to us as human beings starts out in the, in the beginning of the, of the reading today. <clears throat> the very first read, um, message God is giving to Adam and Eve. Now remember, Adam and Eve have been now created and put and placed into the garden. And there's two creation stories. Chapter 1 as Adam and Eve created together in the image and likeness of God. Chapter 2, as Adam created first, then the animals, then Eve, uh, the yes, then Eve, then Eve. So it's so important for us to understand Genesis. Genesis is the beginning of the Bible, and if we get Genesis confused and mixed up, the rest of the Bible is skewed as well. So, now this conversation is really beginning. God has created, and we're not hearing biology, we're not hearing chemistry, we're not even hearing history as we normally think about it. We are hearing religious truth. Religious truth. The truth of who God is, and the truth of who we are as human beings, men and women. And the conversation is now going to get started. God has done his active creation. Adam and Eve have fallen in chapter 3. And now the conversation begins. <coughs> the first question, where are you? Probably the most important spiritual question we can listen to and hear and ask ourselves, for God is asking that question, where are you? Do you think God didn't know? Do you think God was surprised? Do you think God was clueless? The point of the question is not for God to find out where they were, but for Adam and Eve to ponder everything. 
Where are you? How did Adam and Eve stood before the Lord? We could, the theologians have speculated about this. You know, but imagine, in this moment of desperation, instead of owning up to what they've done, standing before God naked, what do they start doing? She did it. He did it. Certainly did it. Everybody starts this. What, have, what would have happened had Adam and Eve both said, Forgive us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Imagine how that could have started maybe the, the, the process earlier in the story. But God knows who we are. God knows how fickle the human heart is. So he's going to begin a conversation. Begin a conversation with these folks. And he comes down a little bit more. Actually, yesterday he begins to want to have this conversation with Adam and Eve and they hide in the bushes instead of coming to the Lord. So as we get ready for Lent, let us come before the Lord in truth. For we are broken people. We are sinful people. And we are cracked. Our humanity is even cracked. For we shall, of course, one day even face death. We are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But God does not need that conversation right there. It's not at all where this is going. And so Jesus begins to feed, once again freely, feeds his followers, his listeners, his disciples. He feeds them again with the bread of life, the words of the gospel, the bread of life, which we are now about to partake. and humility. For the church, may the Lord protect her from all evil. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For governing officials, may God inspire them in enhancing policies that uplift families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. From all who suffer from the violence to human dignity, Inherent in racism and all sin, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may we grow in holiness through the intercession of God's Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. And for all who have died, may they enjoy the splendor of God's eternal glory, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. And today's Mass is offered for Anthony J. Cassiota, a senior by the Hamill family. For Anthony and his family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Now let's pause now in silence to lift up our own particular needs. For all these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, accept the prayers we have brought to you today. <clears throat> we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread. We offer you the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. Become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. In the mixing of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbles himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, who become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, we please the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Please pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. <clears throat> o Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant we pray that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, to as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with all the angels and with all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we have brought to you, uh, we pray, for in sending, by sending down your spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of, Jesus, of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. 
do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and John our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also all of our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with, the blessed, uh, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Stand together now as one body in Christ and pray as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Christ, who takes away the sins of the world, happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Oh. 
Let them thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders for the children of men, for he satisfies the thirsty soul, and the hungry he fills with good things. to live 
that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Great to be here on this Saturday morning with you all to pray. Thank you for coming and helping us pray together well. Uh, of course, Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, a day of fast and abstinence. Uh, check, uh, check the bulletin for the uh, times of masses and the distribution of the ashes. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Amen. Thanks be to God. Pray that the uh, boiler gets fixed over next door so we can have our, our class on Monday morning if you'd like to join us. Hopefully we're, we're going to be there at 10.30. Okay, and join us on Tuesday at 7.30 if you like. Amen.